All righty, we are reviewing what we've talked about in this unit, which we've been talking about systems of equations. If you guys remember, systems of equations just means more than one equation. Uh, most of the time we're dealing with two equations. Okay, so first we talked about solving systems of equations by two different methods. Okay, the first one we talked about was substitution. Now, substitution, think in other words, you're replacing something, you are substituting it, okay? But what we really talked about with substitution was if they are both equal to y, right? They start with y equals and y equals, then they actually equal each other, okay? So actually, I'm going to put that note on our paper. If they both equal y, they equal each other, okay? In other words, if they both say y equals and y equals, we can just take the other sides, or in other words, negative 2x minus 5 and negative 3, set it equal to each other and solve, okay? So that's how we're going to start this. So we have negative 2x minus 5 equal to the other one, negative 3, and now I can go ahead and solve this guy for x. Okay, so the first thing I gotta get rid of is the negative five, it's farthest away, or think reverse PEMDAS. Okay, so the opposite of negative five is positive five, or add five to both sides. So we get negative two x is equal to negative three plus five is positive two. Okay. Now, last step for getting x by itself, the opposite of times by negative 2 is divide by negative 2. So I get x is equal to positive 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. Okay, now remember, in any system of equations, the solution is a coordinate point. Okay, so we're going to write our answer over here. We found that the x part of our coordinate point is negative 1. We now just need the y part. Okay? Okay. So let's go ahead, we're going to take the x and plug it in where we see the x. Well, there's only one option we see the x and that's right there. Okay, so now we have y is equal to this top equation, negative two times x, but instead of x, I'm just gonna leave a space and minus five. Okay, well, we found out that that x is negative one, so I'm gonna plug in negative one. And now I can just solve for y. <clears throat> so I got to multiply first. Negative 2 times negative 1 gives me positive 2. So now I have y is equal to positive 2 minus 5. Okay. And now that's just simple subtraction. 2 minus 5 gives me negative 3. So we found that the y part of that coordinate is negative 3. And there's our answer to number one. The solution to this system of equations was negative one, negative three. Okay. The next method that we talked about, and in fact, I'm not even sure if we talked about this explicitly, um, but it's elimination. Okay, so this is where you're trying to get something to line up that's actually going to cancel itself out. So what we do is we're going to draw a line under here. Okay, and I don't have to multiply or change anything because I automatically see a plus 6y and a minus 6y, okay? So what we're really doing is we're just adding or subtracting straight down each of these. So let's start with our x's. I have negative 3x minus 5x. That's going to give me negative 8x. Okay, well, here's where the elimination comes in. So I have positive 6y, and if I subtract 6y, that turns into a 0, or in other words, it eliminates, Okay, so now I have negative 8x equals 6 minus 6 is 0. Okay, so I'm going to bring up this new equation over here. Negative 8x equals 0, just so we have more space to work. Okay, and now just to solve for x, the opposite of times by negative 8 is divide by negative 8. So I get x is equal to 0 divided by negative 8 is 0. Okay, but remember, we still need the y. So that was just the x part of my solution. We still need the y part. 
Okay, so we're going to take this x and plug it in to whichever equation we really want. It uh, doesn't really seem that one's easier than the other, so I'm just going to plug it into the top one where this x is. Okay, so I have negative 3 times x plus 6y equals 6. Okay, well, we found out that our x is 0, so 0. Well, negative 3 times 0 is just 0, right? So now I have just 6y equals 6. And my last step for solving for y, the opposite of times by 6 is divide by 6, both sides. So we get that y is equal to 6 divided by 6, which is 1. Okay, so that is the y part of my solution. So our final answer, 0, comma, negative 1. And yes, you must include the parentheses and the comma because it's a coordinate point. Okay, awesome. So now we talked about solving systems with graphing. Okay, so we have a quadratic equation and a linear equation. So let's go ahead and graph the quadratic first. That one probably takes the most time. So if we remember graphing quadratics, this guy is in standard form. Okay, standard form tells me A, B, C, where my A is that invisible one in front. Okay, well in order to find the vertex for this quadratic, I'm gonna have to use that little formula, negative B over two times A. In fact, I'm gonna write that over here so we have it on our notes. X is equal to negative B over two times A. And over here, I just didn't include the B and the A because we're gonna plug it in for what they are. Okay, so I know that my B is negative 2, A is 1. Okay, so double negative or a negative negative 2 turns into positive 2, divided by 2 times 1, which is 2. So I get X is equal to 1. Okay, so again, that is the X part of my vertex. So I'm going to write vertex right here, that's 1, and we still need the Y. Okay, so now I'm gonna use that x, just like we've been doing, and plug it in everywhere I see an x in my original quadratic equation. So now it's y is equal to x squared minus two times x plus two. Now I can plug in my one everywhere there's an x, because that's what we found x equal to. Now I can solve. One squared is just one. Negative two times one is negative two and bring the plus two down. And this is going to give me negative one minus two. Well, actually, let's just think negative two plus two. That turns into a zero. So we get y is equal to one as well. So our vertex for our quadratic. Now we're still just talking about our quadratic. The vertex is one, one. So find one on your x-axis and up to positive one on your y-axis. And now we just remember our uh, pattern, which we'll write it over here, up one, over one, and then up three, over one, on each side. Okay, so up one, over one, from that point, up three, one, two, three, over one, and the same thing on the other side, up one, over one, up one, two, three, over one. Okay, connect these points, and there we go. So that's the quadratic. We now have a linear. Okay, the linear is really nice. He's way nicer um, because he's written in slope-intercept form, so we can easily identify our slope and our y-intercept for this guy, which is going to help us graph him. Okay, so the slope is always in front of our x, so that's going to be 4 over 3. My y-intercept is on the end positive 1. Okay, remember when graphing linears, we start with our y-intercept, so find positive 1 on your y-axis. And then we're going to use our slope to count to our next point. So up 4 and over 3. Remember, rise over run. So up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Over 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay. And there we go. So technically, these guys hit in two places. This guy right here, where we see this guy hit, one, 
two. We can't easily identify that, so we're just gonna worry about this guy. Okay, on your assignments, it'll be much easier to identify. Okay, so we're not gonna worry about that point right there. We can estimate, this is probably like 0.25 and then up 1.25, but we're just gonna worry about this guy. So it lines up with three on our x-axis, five on our y, so we write that three comma five. And there we go. Just remember, they do always have two solutions. We're just not gonna worry about that guy because we can't explicitly and easily see where he's at. Okay, so let's do that again. Again, we are graphing a quadratic in standard form and a linear, so we have A, B, C. Again, my A is that invisible one. So I'm gonna go ahead and start finding the vertex using our little formula. So we have X is equal to negative B divided by two times A. Plug in your B on top, B is negative eight, must include the negative, A is one. So we get a double negative, so positive eight on top over two times one, which is two. Eight divided by two is four. Okay, so we just solved for the X part of our vertex. We get positive four. Now we just need the Y part. Okay, so let's go ahead and take that x, 4, and plug it in everywhere we see an x in our original quadratic. So now I have y is equal to x squared minus 8 times x plus 12. Now, I'm going to show you how to just punch this into a calculator. Okay, so everywhere there's an x, we're going to put our 4 first. Now, if you have a calculator, you can punch it in, of course. The only thing I suggest is that you make it look exactly like it does on the paper so that PEMDAS knows how to solve it. Okay, so I'm going to do parentheses, 4, parentheses, squared, minus 8, parentheses, 4, plus 12. So it looks exactly like I wrote it on the paper. Equals negative 4. Of course, you could have done this in your head. You could have solved it kind of by piece like we did on the last one, but... That's kind of why we use calculators as well, save us some time. So we know the vertex is four, negative four. So we're gonna find positive four on our X, go down to negative four on our Y. There's our vertex, and now we just use our pattern. Up one, over one, up one, two, three, over one. Same thing on the other side, up one, over one, up one, two, three, over one. Okay, connect those guys. And there's our quadratic. Now we just need to graph our linear. Okay, so our linear again is written in slope intercept form. So we can identify slope and our y intercept. Okay, so the slope is always right in front of the x. This is a negative one. And our y intercept, we don't see a number on the end of here. So it's just zero. So remember, we start with our y intercept. So place your first point at zero, zero or zero on your y-axis, that's right there. Now we're gonna use our slope of negative one. So down one, over one. Keep going till you see where they cross. Down one, over one. Down one, over one. Down one, over one. And you can keep going, down one, over one. But we see those two explicit points where they cross. Okay, so remember the answers, the solutions are always coordinate points. In this case, there are two. Okay, so my first one is three, negative three, positive three, negative three. And my next one, positive four, negative four. And those are my two solutions to this system of equations. Okay, beautiful. Let's go to number five. So we're still graphing a quadratic and a linear, but this time it's written in our different form. So vertex form gives us our A out in front, H is inside, and then K is on the end. Okay, if you remember vertex form, vertex form is really nice because it tells us our vertex. Remember our vertex is always negative H comma K, meaning we change the sign on the H. Okay, so if that's our vertex, then we just change the sign on the H. Our H is negative one, so it becomes positive one. 
our k is positive 2. And that's it. We didn't have to solve for anything. We can automatically do our vertex. So positive 1 up 2. Now, this is where it's a little different. Because our a is negative 1 in front, instead of going up 1 over 1, we go down 1 and over 1, and then down 1, 2, 3, and over 1. Same thing on the other side, down 1 over 1, down 1, 2, 3, over 1. Again, because that a is negative, this parabola points down, or it's opening down. But there's our, our quadratic. Now we just need to graph our linear. So again, we can identify slope and y-intercept for this linear guy. Slope is right in front of our x. It's a positive 1. And our y-intercept is also positive 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and put them on the graph. Start with your y-intercept at positive 1. So positive 1 right there. And our slope is up 1 over 1. And we can automatically see where these two functions intersect, which is our solutions. Okay, so it's that point and that point. Okay, so now we just identified what those points actually are. So we have 0 up 1. So 0, 1 is our first coordinate point. 1, 2 is our next coordinate point. And those are the solutions. Remember, the graph is not the answer. The graph is how we get the answer. Okay, so let's do that one more time. So again, this is in vertex form. So we have our A, which is actually just that invisible positive one this time, H in the parentheses, K on the end. Okay, vertex, remember, change the sign on the H. But keep k the same, so our vertex for our h is positive 3. That changes to a negative 3. k is 1, stays the same. Okay, so now we can put this vertex for our parabola on our graph. So find negative 3 and up 1. Okay, so in this case, our a is positive. We don't see a negative out front, so it's going to go up 1 over 1, up 1, 2, 3, over 1. Same thing on the other side, up 1 over 1. Up 1, 2, 3, over 1. Connect those points, and there's our parabola for our quadratic. Okay, now let's just go ahead and graph our linear. So we have slope and y-intercept. Slope is always in front of the x. This time it's 3 over 2. Y-intercept's on the end, positive 5. Okay, so start with your y-intercept. Find positive 5 on your y-axis. It's going to be right there. Now we have a slope of up 3 over 2, but we don't have room to go up 3, so we're going to go backwards. Okay, just making sure that that line is going up and to the right because it's positive. So now we're going to go down 3, 1, 2, 3, over 2, 1, 2. And we don't have room to do it again, 1, 2, 3, so we're just going to go ahead and assume right there. Okay, so again, we can explicitly identify, even though my line's not the straightest. Whoops, sorry, and I just bumped my camera. We can explicitly identify this guy. It's going to hit somewhere around there, but because we can't totally see where it's at, we're just going to identify that guy. Okay, so that coordinate point is negative 2, up 2. And there we go. Okay, beautiful. So that was solving systems by graphing. Okay, now let's talk about our last way of solving systems or if we have systems that are given to us as a word problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and read the word problem. Remember, we're looking for two different scenarios. Remember, systems of equations means more than one. So two different scenarios. So it says, Eduardo's school is selling tickets to a play. On the first day of ticket sales, the school sold five senior citizen tickets. Okay, so this is our first scenario. So think first day. Okay, sold five senior citizen tickets, which we'll mark with X, and two child tickets, which we'll label as Y, for a total of $58. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just underline all this important info. Senior citizen tickets, two child tickets, for a total of 58 
and how we turn this into equation. Okay, so it's going to be our first scenario, our first equation. So on the first day, we sold five senior citizen tickets, or 5x, plus two child tickets, 2y, for a total of $58. Okay, so there's our first scenario. The school took in, so meaning a total of $76 on the second day, by selling five senior citizen tickets and four child tickets. Ooh, again, okay, so we have X for senior citizen, four for Y for a total of 76. So on the second day, we had five senior citizen tickets again, five X, plus four child tickets, four Y, for a total of $76. Okay, <clears throat> now, in order to solve this system, we either need to use substitution or elimination. Now, in order to get both of them to equal y, that would take a little more work. So, what we want to do is use elimination. And we want to do that by, I see a 5x and a 5x. Those guys line up. But I want to change this whole equation to negative so they actually cancel out. Okay, so now we have... 5x plus 2y equals 58, our just original top one. But now that I, or I multiplied, excuse me, multiplied the whole second one by negative 1, it turns into minus 5x or negative 5x minus 4y equals negative 76. Okay, now I can solve this by elimination, meaning one of the letters, one of our variables is going to eliminate or cancel out. Okay, so 5x minus 5x turns into a 0. 2y minus 4y is negative 2y. Okay, 58 minus 76, I'm going to do it in my calculator really quick. That gives us negative 18. Now I can just solve for y. Okay, so the opposite of times by negative 2. Divide by negative 2 to get my y all by itself. And I get y is equal to positive 9. Okay, so we found our y, now we need our x, or in other words, we found how much they were charging for our child tickets. Remember, find the price of a senior citizen ticket and the price of a child ticket. Okay, well, y was our child tickets, so we found out they were charging $9. Now we just need to find what we are charging for x, the senior citizen tickets. Okay, so we're going to take this 9 and plug it in wherever. I'm just going to plug it in to the top one. Okay, so now I get 5x plus 2 times y, but now it's 9, equals 58. Sorry, you can't see it. There you go. And now I can just solve for x. Okay, so I have 5x still plus 2 times 9, 18, equals 58. Okay, go ahead and subtract the 18, opposite of plus 18, minus 18. So we get 5x is equal to 40. Let me double check that. Yep, 40. Okay, my very last step is going to be to divide by the 5, opposite of times by 5, divide by 5. So we get x is equal to 40 divided by 5, 8 dollars eight or eight dollars okay so our two solutions they were charging nine dollars for a child ticket and eight dollars for a senior citizen ticket okay you could write this as a coordinate point it's still the same answer but because it's in context this is like saying nine dollars and eight dollars okay last example this one's not really a story we're just kind of given a scenario so it says, find the value of two numbers, meaning what, find x and y, okay, x and y. If their sum, okay, sum means we are adding, and they're different, their sum is 9, and their difference, if we're subtracting them, and I could spell subtract, is 1. Okay, so two scenarios. The first scenario, we're adding them. The second scenario, we're subtracting them. Okay, so if when we're adding them, x plus y, they're equal to 9, 
and we're subtracting them, x minus y is equal to 1, there we go. We have our two systems of equations set up. Okay, so I see that these guys automatically line up with an elimination. I have plus y and minus y. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just rewrite it over here so we can see it. x plus y equals 9, x minus y equals 1. Okay, well, like I said, one of those guys eliminates because y minus y is 0. So now we just add straight down x plus x, it's 2x, because I have two positive x's, equals 9 plus 1 is 10. Now we just solve for our x. Opposite of times by 2 is divide by 2. So we get x is equal to 5. So we know that our first number is 5. Okay, now we just need to know our second number. Oops. So now we can take this 5 and plug it in to either of these original equations. I'm just going to go ahead and plug it in to my first one. So I have 5 plus y equals 9. And I just did parentheses to show that we plugged it into that space. Okay, so I can rewrite it. So without the parentheses, now I just solve for y. Okay, so the only thing I got to get rid of is this positive 5 over here. So the opposite of positive 5, negative 5. Okay, so we get y is equal to 9 minus 5, which is 4. So we found our two answers. Again, you could write it as a coordinate point, but in this case, we're just asked for context with story problems. So our first number, x equals 5, y equals 4. Okay, those are your notes. There's an assignment that goes with it.